Good morning, Saints. I greet you once again in this particular format in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune head of God. But once again, it's all under one control, and that's God himself. And I thank each of you this morning for coming out to see what the Lord has to say. There is a word from the Lord today. Have mercy, Lord. And I thank him for keeping you, uh, providing all of your your needs, uh, your desires, and, and even your wants. And I pray and trust that you came with some expectation and some anticipation this morning, looking for something from the Lord Jesus Christ, because he has it. Have mercy, Lord. Everything that we need, we can find it in the word of the Lord. And once again, we're coming to you in this particular format. Uh, the doors of the church of the building is closed again, but God is still in the house. And how we know that he's still in the house because what he lives inside of us. Have mercy, Lord. Uh, we're just uh, acting on the, the side of caution uh, right now uh, with this uh, pandemic that's going around and this new virus, uh, we're just taking this side of caution. Uh, the Bible teaches us to be vigilant. Have mercy, Lord. And that's what we are doing at this particular time. So we will be bringing you the message in this particular format uh, for the next few weeks uh, until such time as the Lord move in their, our hearts and our spirits that we may return to the sanctuary. So again, thank you all so much for coming and we pray that all is well with each of you. Have mercy, Lord. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come now and we're just so grateful to you once again for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. And Lord, we thank you for a sound mind and thank you for things being as well as it is. God, we're still leaning and depending and trusting in you because you're all that we have, God, all that we have. We know that your word has this sustaining power, God. So, Lord, we rest with your word. Have mercy upon us. We come this morning, God, uh, anticipating uh, something from you, Lord. And God, any way you bless, Father, we will be satisfied. So continue to open up our minds and our hearts, God, that as the word go out to see, God, let it fall in a good heart. And God, that we will be better when we leave than it was when we came. Lord, we ask that you would uphold us now this hour with your free spirit. And we ask it in the only name whereby man can be sustained and delivered. It is in Christ Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. And the Redeemer of the Lord said, Amen. So thank you all once again. And there is a word that comes from the Lord today. And it will be coming out of the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, the first chapter of Hebrews, beginning at verse 1. Hebrews 1 and 1, you will find these words. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Verse 4, being made so much better than the angels, 
as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Have mercy, Lord. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Have mercy, Lord. I thank the Holy Spirit who has provided me with a theme or a topic to go along with the folk of verses uh, this morning that will hopefully give them a little bit more clarity that as the seed go out and see the seed is always good because it's the word of God that as the seed go out that it will be planted in our spirit and in our heart have mercy Lord and as that seed began to manifest itself and in that manifestation that our lives may be transformed right before our eyes and that we all may continue to live a life that may be pleasing unto the Lord for the rest of our lives. Have mercy, Lord. So, God, we, we thank you right now. So, for just a few moments uh, this morning, I want to speak with you on th this subject. Jesus, my deliverer. Jesus, my deliverer. Now, when we think about that particular topic, see, salvation is already settled. Salvation is, is not in question right now. We have asked the Lord to come into our lives and be our Lord and our Savior. So we are saved. But right now, I need to be delivered because there may be some things in our lives that are going on right now that we need to be delivered from. I'm reminded of scripture in the book of Daniel uh, with the uh, three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, they were part of a multitude of people that were uh, standing around when uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king at this particular time, had made an image of himself. And he told the crowd of people that when they hear the sound of the music, that everybody needed to bow and uh, worship unto him. But here Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told the king that they would not bow. And they would not bow because the God that they serve, the true and living God, the same God we serve today, have mercy, Lord, the true and living God will deliver us. But they went on to tell him, say, well, king, if he does not, but if he does not, Ah, we still are going to worship and serve the true and living God. So this enraged the king. The king took the three Hebrew boys and, and, and three of the strongest men that he had in his army, and they threw them into the fiery furnace. And, and after a while, the king came back, have mercy, Lord, and he looked in the furnace but instead of seeing three men in there, he saw four. And then he said, the fourth looked like the son of the living God. So see, the three Hebrew boys did not need salvation. Have mercy, Lord. See, they were already saved. What they needed was deliverance. Have mercy, Lord. And some things may be going on in our lives today, right now. Situations and circumstances and, and, and uh, things that we just can't seem to climb over. We don't need salvation. We know that we're saved because we trust the true and living God. But right now, we need deliverance from those issues that are plaguing us right now in our lives. So now, as we examine this particular passage of Scripture, the question is asked, who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus who at sundress times and uh, uh, diverse manners spoke? spoke? Now, when we look at those two particular terms, sundress times and diverse manners, it refers to the many and variety of ways that God spoke during the Old Testament period. And you see, God used many approaches to send his message to his people. God has and will always continue to find a way to get the message to the people. And see, in during this particular time, he spoke to Isaiah in visions. 
He spoke to, to Jacob in dreams. And he also spoke to Abraham and Moses personally. See, God always and will continue find a way to get his message out. So you see, it's a question that has been asked by countless individuals for more than two millenniums. And that's more than 2,000 years ago. And the question is still being asked today, who is this Jesus? Have mercy, Lord. Now, let us understand it is the most important question, have mercy, Lord, that can ever be asked and answered. The most important. After all, when you really look at it and consider it, is how we began our journey toward salvation. You see, if Jesus doesn't come, ah, if he doesn't come, there is no salvation. If Jesus doesn't come, there is no eternal life. So the question again, who is this Jesus? So it is essential to answer that question by saying Jesus is indeed, no question, he is indeed the son of the living God. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. He is that. But he is also m much more, much more. He is our what? deliverer. Have mercy, Lord. Now, Scripture refers to him as the image of the invisible God. When we look at Colossians 1 and 15, Colossians 1 and 15, we will find these words who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now, when we look at this particular passage and we exegesis this, Scripture tells us that the Colossian people, the Colossian church, had several misconceptions about Christ. And the Apostle Paul had to address those issues. So he spoke with the Colossian people there. Now, one of their misconceptions is that they believed that matter is evil. So they said God could not have come to earth as a true human being in bodily form. But we know that's not true because Jesus came in what? In the flesh. He put on flesh. Have mercy, Lord. And Paul further stated, he says that Christ is the exact likeness of God. Rather, it is God himself. God himself. Yet Paul said that he died on the cross as a human being. As a human being. Now, the Colossians, they had some other misconceptions. Number two, they believe that God did not create the world because he would not have created evil. So here, the Apostle Paul again addressing the Colossian people. Paul said that Jesus Christ, who was also in the flesh, in the flesh, is the creator of both heaven and and earth. He is the creator of every living creature. The Bible says they creeps upon the face of the earth. The misconception. Number three that they had. They said that Christ was not the unique son of God. How merciful, Lord, can you believe that? That he's not the son of God. But rather, they're saying that he is one of the intermediaries. In other words, Christ was there between God and the people. He was kind of like the mediator. Now, he is a mediator. Thank God that he is. But he's not the kind of mediator that the Colossian people thought that he was. See, because if Christ doesn't come between man and God, we are yet on our road to death, hell, and destruction. So we thank God for Jesus for standing in the gap. Have mercy, Lord. Lord, thank you today. And Paul went on to explain to these people that Christ existed before 
anything else and is the firstborn of those resurrected. Have mercy, Lord. In the book of John 1 and 1, you will find these words. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God was here before there was anything else. Have mercy, Lord. He was here before there was a when and a where. God was here before there was a beginning. There is no beginning to God. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Nothing exists outside of God. Have mercy, Lord. So the Apostle Paul uh, was trying to get over to the Colossian people that God is the source. Have mercy, Lord. And that brings us to the fourth misconception that they had. They refused to see Christ as the source of salvation. Again, if Christ doesn't come, if Christ Christ doesn't go to the cross. If Christ doesn't give up the ghost, if he doesn't go in the grave and rise on the third day with all power in his hand, there is no salvation. And if there is no salvation, there is no eternal life. Have mercy, Lord. And Paul was trying to explain that to these people. Have mercy, Lord. And we today, as pastors and preachers, we're still trying to explain that to people today. See, the Colossians, they insisted that people could find God through some special and secret knowledge. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 3 and 5, it plainly tells us, it says, The trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not upon what thine own understanding. So you cannot find God through knowledge. You cannot find God through some secret or special knowledge. That's not how you come to Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Paul said you can't find him that way. He went on to tell him, he said, you can find Christ by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ and Christ alone. There is no other way. Have mercy, Lord. He is a deliverer. Lord, thank you this morning. And you see, no one has ever looked upon the face of Christ, the Almighty God, and lived. No one. His glory is just too powerful. Now, the Bible does teach us that during the Old Testament times, there were some people that were found, found themselves in the presence of God. In the presence of God. But they never looked upon his glory. They never looked upon his glory. The Bible teaches us that Moses and God were good friends. And Moses asked God one day, said, Lord, show me your glory. And God took Moses and he put him inside of a cave. Lord, thank you this morning. And God put his hands over the mouth of the cave. And as he passed by, Moses saw the backside of God, but he never saw the glory of God. Because here again, the Bible says no man has ever seen the glory of God and lived. This flesh can't stand the power. Have mercy, Lord. The Bible did goes on to teach us. That when the Son of Man, Jesus Christ himself, when he came down from heaven, he did veil himself in human flesh. In human flesh. And he bridged the gap between the Father's perfect holiness and mankind's sinful condition. If Jesus doesn't step in the gap and reconciled us back to God again, we would yet be again on our road to death, hell, and destruction. So we thank God for Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for stepping in the gap. God will deliver and he will do it on time. Have mercy, Lord. That's why 
He's the only one that can say that when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Have mercy, Lord. God, we thank you this morning, and we're getting ready to close. In the book of John, John 14 and 9, John 14 and 9, you will find these words. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he's speaking directly to Philip here. He that has seen me has seen the, the Father. And how saith uh, thou then show us the Father? This is a question to Philip. And when we exit Jesus, this particular passage of Scripture, it tells us that Jesus is the visible, tangible image of the invisible God. He is all of that and more. He is our deliverer. Remember, salvation is not the question here because we are saved. We just need to be delivered from situations and circumstances that we are a part of or that we were involved in, whether it's our fault or not, we need to be delivered. Have mercy, Lord, the invisible God. He is, he is the complete revelation of what God is, the complete revelation. Now, Jesus went on to explain to Philip, who wanted to see the Father, that he says to know Jesus is to know God. We're one in the same, Philip. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Have mercy, Lord. Now, the Bible teaches us, it says, to search for God. The truth of God and the reality of, of, of God, it ends in Christ. If you want to know who God is, find out who Christ is. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. And you see, the way to come to know the Father is to get to know the Son. Get to know the Son, who is the only full expression and explanation of God. There is no other. No one else can fit that role other than the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And we need to remember that everyone who through faith, have mercy, Lord, you got to do it through faith, through faith, trust Jesus as their Savior. Have mercy, Lord, and receive forgiveness of their sins. When you pray to God and God forgive you of your sins, then Christ imputes you with his righteousness through the power and, and the element of the Holy Spirit who comes to live inside of us. And he's put there that he may guide us and counsel us and direct us and deliver us. Jesus, my deliverer, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord. And let us remember, let us remember, and we're closing, let us remember as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, by trusting in Christ, when we trust in Christ, we are given the divine insight to God. Can you imagine that? The divine insight to God. We don't have to worry about the veil anymore because it has been ripped. We can go directly, directly to our Father. He tells us to bring all of our cares unto Him. We can walk right up to Him. We have the inside scope because of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God. God is a deliverer. Salvation is not in the play right now. Salvation has already been established. I just need to be delivered, God, from whatever is plaguing at this particular time. You are a deliverer, Lord Jesus. I trust you, Lord with my life 
because you are a deliverer. Listen, let me say this. Lord, thank you now. The doors of the church are open and they have been open ever since God told Peter, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against them. God did not close that invitation. And today, we again ask you by invitation that you may come to Christ just as you are. My brothers and my sisters, we are living in a time right now where Christ could come back any time. Have mercy, Lord. The world is so upset. It's erupting on every hand. Nobody is happy anymore. Nobody is in love anymore. Everybody's out for revenge, to, to, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. They are exercising the character of Satan. You need to come. You need to come just as you are. Have mercy, Lord. I can help you with your salvation. Have mercy, Lord. If you need just an explanation or an understanding of who God is, I'm like Paul right now. I'll be more than happy to sit and go over God's word with you. You need to come. I can be reached at 850-893-7085. Just call me. I will be delighted to sit with each of you. Help us, Lord. Let us pray. Oh, eternal God, Lord, we come once again. And Father, we are just so grateful to you for the way you have blessed us this morning. We realize, God, that the blessing was in the house. And Lord, I receive it this morning in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, help me that I may continue to not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind, God, that I will keep my mind stayed on you. That, Lord God, if you decide to come back right now, I don't want to have to worry about getting ready. I will be ready. Lord, thank you now. We ask that you would bless, Lord, like never before. Let your spirit reign in this place. And God, we offer a prayer for the entire world right now that seems to be upset in every way and in every form, God. Lord, help us. Get us ready, Lord God. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you so much for first loving us. As you allow us to go forth from this point on, God, we ask that you would surround us with your loving care. Keep us, dear God. Have mercy, Lord, until we meet again. And it is in Christ Jesus' name, Lord, we do pray. And the Redeemer of the Lord said, Amen. We ask this morning that you would go in peace and continue to take care of yourself and to take care of one another. When it comes your time to give, do it with a cheerful heart and a cheerful spirit. Have mercy, Lord. God will deliver, and he will do it on time. And I want you to always remember, always remember, that God loves you, and so do I. Y'all be blessed, and that the remainder of this day that God will show you favor like never before. And this coming week, that God will go before you, that everything that you touch, say, and do will manifest itself. And God be glorified.